Welcome to part two of our IBP inventory module demonstration brought to you by SEM Connections. In the first half of this series we talked about the IBP inventory basics and the baseline model that we have set up. Um, in this section we'll be talking about the IBP inventory demo itself, so a demonstration actually in the system followed by real questions, real answers, and then next steps. So again, in this section, we'll just be focusing on the last three topics. So probably the first thing that we should clarify is what's the difference between IBP SNOP and the difference between IBP inventory module. Um, if you know IBP SNOP then you already know quite a bit of IBP inventory. For example, the, um, the, the main difference between IBP inventory and SNOP is that there's a different planning area which um, is for the current version that we're in, but again that could be combined into one into the future. Um, so I guess my point is is that the online dashboard reports that you would get with um, any other IBP module are the same with IBP inventory. The um, users and how you set up users and role groups is the same, how you set up alerts, um, how you even load data um, either through this web tool or through HCI is the same. So um, that's good news. Um, the Excel add-in is also um, the same Excel add-in used for SNOP. Um, the only thing I did differently was I just logged on to a different planning area to show you what's going on in IBP inventory. But you create views the same way, you save data the same way you manage your master data. Um, there's a little bit of confusion for release 4 as to how scenario slash versions work, but I'm told that's actually fixed in the next release, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But the fact that you can create versions um, just like you did in SNOP um, is the same. The The big difference with um, IBP inventory versus SNOP is that the programs are different. And so if I were to run um, the online programs you'll see that there's this multi-stage and single stage inventory optimization which we'll get to um, pretty heavily here in a little bit. But that's the fundamental difference between these modules is the calculations. And there's a lot there, don't get me wrong, but as far as a platform is concerned, IBP you're probably talking 80% is the same um, across modules. So if you know one module, then you're uh, well on your way to understanding the rest of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go jump in right away and run the multi-stage op optimization while that's running or queuing up to run. I will uh, go through the data since it won't make a difference until I actually hit refresh. So in order to run the, sing the multi or single stage optimization, you go under um, uh, the run programs. You can actually see for the uh, single stage that it has a filter. Um, so if you needed to rerun an optimizer on just one location, then you can do that since obviously if you had 50 warehouses and 50 manufacturing sites, you don't want to necessarily have to rerun the whole thing. But for global stage, it's 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 the whole thing. And um, it's going to give me a message that says a job has been set up, just like in SNOP. And there's going to be a status bar that right now is just going to say ready. I've actually found that it takes longer for the program just to queue up. The actual running of the program as you can see down here is a matter of seconds, three or four seconds. But um, we'll come back to that in a second um, and have that run. Um, the the what I wanted to show you in this query was this was the data that we discussed in the prior video. So you can see, for example, that the forecast at the warehouse, DC 101, is 5,000. Its forecast error for all products is 20%, and its target service target level is 95%. That's going to be the same across the board, with the exception of DC 103 that has a 25% uh, forecast error and if I go down here a little bit you'll see for DC 104 that there's a 99 percent service level perhaps most importantly since I haven't um, well two two things one for DC 101 you're gonna see that the only product that has a lead time of one is product three and then the only product that has a PBR greater than one is product two and you'll see how that impacts the safety stock calculations and target inventory um, quite substantially actually uh, and then the other thing you can see down here is that for pro 
plant 201 and 202, the forecast is blank because it's not shipping anything to a customer. It has no target service level to speak of. Um, obviously, no transportation lead time. and uh, But also, its recommended safety stock is blank along with its inventory position and inventory holding cost. So I bet that this program is already run by now, even waiting for the queue. And so if I hit status, you'll see that it's completed. Uh, if it didn't, it'll give you an error, and in some cases it'll show you messages on what went wrong. But in general, I found the master data to be much more forgiving in, this, um, in the inventory module than SNOP um, so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit refresh, and when I hit refresh, this will um, be the results of that program. Um, what should happen is that, um, hope happens, is that the safety stock inventory position and holding costs are calculated. So again, as you've seen before in other demos, the response is pretty fast and yay, it actually um, calculated these. You can see the recommended safety stock for product one. Um, by the way, I'm doing this, I just chose one week, it's week 35, but I easily could have unfiltered on that and had the uh, time series go across like you've probably seen in other videos but in this case I just wanted to focus on one period. Um, you can see the recommended safety stock was 1969 for this product and this location and again we could spend three hours on the safety stock calculation because it takes quite a bit of um, inputs and statistical knowledge to, to figure out what that black box calculation is doing. Uh, but you can see also that it took a target inventory position of essentially the safety stock plus the 5,000 forecast, and that's because its PBR was 1 and there was no transportation lead time. You can see it also calculated the inventory holding cost based on that $2 inventory holding cost rate. You can also see, this is why I like this query, you can see very easily uh, what that difference of uh, different PBRs and different lead times have an effect on. You can see the uh, recommended safety stock is slightly higher. Uh, you can see that the target inventory position is essentially double the forecast plus the safety stock and that's because I'm only ordering every other period so I need to order twice as much essentially and then that transportation lead time with the PBR1 is also impacting my target inventory position since there is that one period delay for the inventory um, to get to me. Um, you can also see that if I went down to uh, DC 104 um, so the difference between DC 102, 103, and 104 is um, the forecast um, error and the target service level. And you can see how those safety stocks are slightly different. Um, a higher service level, a DC 104, has bumped up the recommended safety stock. And you can see that the forecast error being 5% worse has also bumped up the recommended safety stock. Um, and then finally, if I went down to the manufacturing plants, you'll see that the forecast error is still blank because, again, it's not selling anything to customers. And um, it's actually calculated recommended safety stock, again, based on that risk pooling and calculated the inventory cost. So the next query I wanted to show you was just for DC 101 and plant 201. And uh, I switched out some of the key figures that were probably a little bit more helpful. So instead of having the forecast, which was just the demand coming from the customer, I actually did the propagated demand. And you can see now that plant 201 is getting 5,000 um, demand and 10,000 and 5,000 um, from the uh, downstream warehouse. Uh, the recommended safety stocks the same, target inventory positions the same. And then this is a key, key figure that um, that you really want to understand, and that is the internal non-stock out probability. So if you remember, we were talking about multi-stage optimization and how the service level from the DC to the manufacturing side usually is assumed to be 99% in order to hit it. But with this risk pooling and the inventory optimization heuristic, it actually calculates what is the optimal probability um, for the service level between warehouse and manufacturing site. And so you can see for this, these different products and based on these different inputs, um, there is a 69.93% chance service level between the warehouse and the plant. You'd say, well, that's horrible. But again, this is also will still maintain a 95% service level to the customer. And that's why you see these recommended safety stocks being so incredibly low at the manufacturing site. The other two key figures that I added were the average expedites and the internal back order mean. And not to spend too much time on this, but essentially those are um, 
those are those are inputs to your um, expected demand loss and so if you want to figure out what that 95 percent service level is costing you in lost orders um, this is where you're going to do it where it's where this tells you um, if you're over your demand these are the expected um, orders that you the quantities that you will have lost so a lot of good information on that but out of the scope of this particular video So that about does it for the inventory demo. We'll do subsequent videos on the components, which will, um, which is essentially a variation of the same theme, and um, other vid videos down there, down the road. But essentially, you get the the basics of the inventory demo and how IBP inventory works. So for the next section, I wanted to do real questions, real answers, and by that I meant um, some of these questions. Well, let me back up. So I think IBP inventory has a huge business case on just getting your safety stock down to a correct level. I mean, uh, most clients I've come across have some have some pretty basic ways of calculating safety stock. They may just say, give me 45 days of inventory or five days of coverage or 15 days of coverage or whatever it is. And um, with these tools now, you can really get down into, based on your accuracy and a whole host of things, what's your real number? and uh, I think we're going to find with our clients that there's a huge cost savings that that we're going to be able to to get from that. So that's huge number one value of IBP inventory. But I think the other thing about IBP inventory, which is so fascinating to me, is that it can answer some very specific questions and actually put dollars against them. So for example, on the screen you see what is for what would happen if forecast accuracy fell from 80 to 75 percent? Maybe not even across the entire product portfolio. If I just wanted to say for this number one product, if we really focused on forecast accuracy what am I going to save or um, customer service we always say we're not customer oriented and it's 99% well are we really 99% customer oriented if it's going to cost us a million bucks to go from 95 to 99% customer service and again what was that extra 1% or 4% costing us we had really no idea of knowing and unless you wanted to go sit down and crank it all out and then have a questionable answer at the end of the day um, it was extremely difficult to do and then same thing with periods between replenishment or the lead time now some people would say well I don't really care about lead time but you may care about things like minimum lot size or you may care about um, other factors which are kind of related to periods between replenishment or lead time and and again it's it's what does that really cost me when I'm negotiating with some customer and um, some third-party sourcing and I'm trying to figure out you know they're giving me 45 days um, lead time it's like what's it worth to me if they could make it 30 or um, if if their lot size wasn't half a million units but 200,000 units what what does that mean to me as far as what safety stock do I have to carry so a lot of those questions before probably um, could not be answered very well or very easily and again I think this is a time for me to say don't let the simple data model fool you. I mean, most most clients have more than three products and more than three, four warehouses and more than two manufacturing sites. And so you add to that level of complexity, you saw how complex it was just with that very simple data model. You can imagine when you start adding in components and all these other factors over time, um, how nearly impossible it is to calculate manually. So, uh, so I made this actual query. This is actually a query in IBP. And um, I actually calculated these values. Um, so what was forecast accuracy if it fell from 80 to 75 percent? Well, it's the difference between um, two different scenarios that I had. Now, um, here's the actual data for it. Um, so you can see, if you remember, you know, DC-103 represented that 75 percent accuracy scenario and DC-104 represented the 99 percent scenario. So I basically, instead of having to go through making versions or scenarios, which you could also do as well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that, I just wanted to show how easy it was now to calculate some of these numbers and have you just think for a moment how powerful that can be. So for example, on that first one, forecast accuracy call falls from 80 to 75 percent. That's simply a comparison of the inventory cost of DC 102 to DC 103 okay and then on that customer service increase it's again same same story it's DC 102 oops sorry it's DC 102's cost 
versus DC's 104's cost. Now again, I understand that in a real world you wouldn't have that nice little way of being able to divide this stuff up and you're not going to have a warehouse that has that is going to be exactly identical on all things except for one element. I think my point is is that I could have done this with versions. I just wanted to show you really quickly how it could be done. And again, the differences in cost between um, replenishment and lead time. Um, again, my caveat here is that you know for these calculations in some cases they're all products and sometimes it's just one product I compared against and it's warehouse only. I mean for example I could with the scenario go down to that manufacturing level so if I have to carry a higher safety stock at a warehouse due to PBR what impact if any does that have on the manufacturing site? So that handles real questions real answers and I'm sure if you um, um, or like me and kind of um, think about some of these options. There's some pretty powerful information that you can get uh, from this tool now. So for next steps, this is just uh, shameless plug time, but actually there's some good information in here. Uh, first thing at SEM Connections, one thing we do is, um, whether it's us or another consulting firm or SAP, highly encourage you to go uh, do a deeper dive or do a quick start. For us, a deeper dive is um, using our data, but in front of you kind of having a, a more one-on-one -on -one exchange and diving deeper into questions that you inevitably have. Um, quick starts for us are um, using your data in our system very quickly, maybe a business unit or a representative sample, just to go figure out what um, inventory savings potential is out there. Um, and, and so instead of doing a nine month, 12 month kind of project at the end and figuring out did you save any money, this is just a quick answer to say, hey, what, what kind of money can we possibly save and what's it worth to us? And again, these projects can be extremely short thanks to uh, Thanks to Hana and um, the the cloud, a lot of these a lot of these development windows are, have been shrunk considerably due to uh, versus a traditional SAP implementation. And then, of course, for next steps, more information, we have uh, scmconnections.com where we have a lot of blog posts and um, I would say geeky supply chain discussions around. Um, what is forecast accuracy? How is the safety stock things calculated? A lot of stuff on IBP and IBP inventory. Uh, YouTube channel where you guys have probably watched in this video. And then of course if you guys have feedback or a quick question that wasn't answered in the video but um, um, you want us to give us a shot as an answer to it, uh, definitely drop us an email. As you can tell we, we love talking about this stuff so um, um, you're more than welcome to, to ask us questions and see if we can help you out.